Hello and welcome to this science tutor video for Cape Chemistry. I'm your tutor Nathan and in this video we're going to do a few simple examples using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR theory. VSEPR theory is a useful theory that is very helpful in predicting the shape of simple structures based on the numbers of electrons that are involved in the outer shell or outer shells of the atoms involved in bonding in forming the structure. The number of atoms on the central, sorry, the number of electrons on the central atom is taken into consideration for VSEPR theory because repulsion between these electrons along with all of the other electrons in the structure helps to determine the shape or orientation that all of the atoms in the entire structure will take up or occupy. Now, some electrons, depending on their condition, their bonding condition or their bonding states, repel others more than another class of bonding electrons. So or on your screen you see a list of the order in which the repulsion is observed in complexes. Lone pair, lone pair repulsion. In other words, the repulsion between two lone pairs that are on the same atom is greater than the repulsion between a lone pair and a bonding pair, essentially between a lone pair and a bond, which is in turn greater than repulsion between two bonds on a molecule. And so knowing the number of electrons on your central atom along with knowing the order in which the repulsion tends to fall or tends to be observed allows you to make an educated guess as to the shape of your structure. So we have three examples which we're going to do in this video. The first is sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. Sulfur hexafluoride is composed of one sulfur atom, which is your central atom, and six fluorine atoms. The number of electrons on the central atom is most important for your valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and diagrams, so that's what we're going to focus on. So sulfur itself has six electrons in its outer shell. All right. So sulfur has six electrons, and it will be bonding, in this case it's bonded to six fluorine atoms, each of which donates one electron to the single bonds between sulfur and fluorine. So from each or from all of the fluorine atoms another six electrons are donated which leads to a structure with 12 electrons involved in bonding. So there are 12 electrons formed in bonding or six single bonds and there are no non-bonding pairs or lone pairs on this molecule. This implies that the shape of the molecule is octahedral. Octahedral not because there are eight atoms involved, because this case does not involve eight atoms, but octahedral because that is the term that refers to a typical or a general six coordinate structure, a structure with one central atom and six ligands or six other atoms or six um, complex ions, whatever your other atoms are beside the central atom, six of those surrounding it. So the structure has sulfur in the middle, it's a central atom. Surrounding it on the outside you have your six fluorine atoms 
Four of these atoms are arranged in one plane. These are the four that are drawn here. Two of them coming towards you, out of, and two of them going backwards into the screen. While the remaining fluorine atoms are arranged above and below the sulfur atom, respectively. So this is your VSEPR structure. The second example involves xenon bonded to four fluorines. XEF4. XEF4 has four single bonds. All right. One bond between each fluorine atom and the central atom, which is xenon in this case. Xenon itself has eight electrons in the outer shell. It is a noble gas element, so its outer shell is actually filled as an atom. And in addition to these eight electrons, it receives one electron from each fluorine atom. So from the fluorine, there are four additional electrons. Now, as I said before, each of these bonds between xenon and fluorine is a single bond, so there will be four single bonds, which take up eight electrons, but there are 12 electrons, eight plus four electrons, or 12 electrons in total, which means that after you've drawn your structure, there will be four non-bonding electrons, or four lone pair electrons. The repulsion between lone pairs of electrons and bonding pair of electrons is stronger than between bonding pairs of electrons and bonding pairs of electrons. In this case, the lone pairs will occupy positions on the structure that are as far away from the bonding pairs as possible or from, in, or from each other, while the bonding pairs will occupy positions as far away as possible but less separated than the lone pairs from all other electrons. A simple way of looking at this is to take an octahedral structure, like for SF6. In this case, Xe is your central metal, or your central atom, and it is surrounded by four fluorine atoms and two lone pairs. The top and bottom positions on your structure, and I'm going to use the SF6 molecule in, as an example here, these two structures are 90 degrees from the closest atoms, or closest bonding electrons, which are the fluorines, and are 180 degrees apart from the other position, the top and bottom position. So the top position is 180 degrees from the bottom position, and 90 degrees from the horizontal position, or axial position. The lone pairs will always try to occupy these positions, if possible, on this molecule. So one lone pair will occupy the top position, another one will occupy the bottom position. The other atoms, the fluorine atoms, occupy the remaining spaces. like so. And so your structure is square planar. It's essentially an octahedral structure that has the top and bottom positions replaced by lone pairs of electrons. The final structure is the sulfate ion, SO4 2 minus. 
sulfur has six electrons in the outer shell there are four bonds between sulfur and the oxygen atoms that surround it two of these bonds are double bonds so another way of looking at this is to say that actually um, six bonds in total we'll get to that shortly so the two double bonds contribute two electrons each and the two single bonds involve contributions of one electron each So there are a total of six electrons involved in bonding. Now these electrons that we're talking about, the two electrons each from the double bonds and one electron from the single bonds, are those contributed by the sulfur atom only. We're not including the electrons from the oxygen in this case. So, all of the sulfur electrons, all six, are involved in bonding. So there are no lone pairs or non-bonding electrons. And so the structure is tetrahedral. We have a tetrahedral structure in which the sulfur atom is our central atom. We have two double bonds to each of the oxygens and the remaining two oxygens are singly bonded. So I hope this video was useful. Remember you can leave us a comment in the comment section below if there is something you want clarified or if you found that the video really was helpful. You can also feel free to like and share this video online. And thanks for watching.